Barbacoa, the form of cooking meat slowly over an open fire or more traditionally in the ground. Dig a pit, put your coals in, put your, your meat on top, cover it up. I'm uh, not going to do that today, but we are going to do some barbacoa tacos. The great thing about barbacoa tacos and the tacos I'm going to be focusing a lot of attention on this year on the channel is they're easy. It's something you can, you know, throw, throw the meat on the grill, let it do its thing. And the toppings are easy. The, the sauces are easy or pretty easy anyway. I guess that's all relative to your experience and how much time you have. We're going to take a big chunk of cheap beef. We're gonna slow cook it over some charcoal on the Masterbuilt Gravity Fed Smoker. If you haven't heard of the Masterbuilt Gravity Smoker, that's another thing we're gonna be focusing on today. And I'm gonna show you how to get it done right now. Guys, I'm not gonna lie to you. I was a little late to the party on this guy. Uh, I didn't even really know it existed until I was just browsing Masterbuilt's website and I saw Gravity Smoker. Well, if there's something I haven't heard of before, I like to kind of look into it and I'm glad that I did. I've been using this for several months now and I don't have a single complaint about this guy. If you've seen some of my uh, Masterbuilt videos from my original Masterbuilt electric smoker, you'll know I wasn't a big Masterbuilt fan, but uh, I figured I'd give them another shot and they nailed it. So far, this thing has produced great food reliably. And if you don't know what a gravity smoker is, it's simple. Your charcoal goes in here. Just dump it in. I'll show you in a second. There's a dead man switch here. You got to be careful of that because if this isn't closed, the fan won't run. And I'll tell you about the fan in a second. These guys open your airway up. So you take those out before you use it and your, your charcoal gets dumped in here, you start your fire in here, and this is also your ash area where you take the ashes out. Don't forget to take these guys out. If you do forget, then your fire is, your, your charcoal is gonna go out. Nice little bench here. How practical it is, uh, I don't, you know, I know why they made it like this, because they didn't really have the space here. Uh, it gets, it serves a purpose, but it's, it's just not real big, but I like, the, the way that it folds up and unfolds. Great design there. Just a beautiful piece of work here. Another dead man switch here. And so you gotta be careful with that. Dead man switch on the ash uh, bin as well. So be careful of that. Make sure those are shut and latched properly or the fan won't run. The fan is underneath of the cooking area. And what it does is it blows air from the firebox into the, the smoking area. With the control panel, you know, I had um, not the best results with previous Masterbuilt control panels, but this one, it turns the fan on and off to maintain whatever temperature you set it to. And you can also use your phone to get this just right. So I think they really nailed it with this one, guys. Uh, I, I encourage you to look into it if you haven't already or haven't heard about it. Uh, another cool thing about this Masterbuilt is when you're done cooking, when you put your, your slides back in to block off the holes, uh, the charcoal will go out so you don't have to waste any and it's still in there nice and neat good old king for guys that this just goes to show you if you produce a good product and you stand behind your product and you're consistent you don't really have to do a whole lot more they they have had this charcoal forever and it's uh it's a wonderful product She'll hold some charcoal, which is an awesome thing because you don't have to constantly worry about refilling it. Inside the ash area is where you start the fire. Little basket with your charcoal dust. Such a great design here. Got that empty, we'll put that back in. And here, right here, is a slide that keeps the charcoal up and allows the ash to fall through. Uh, we're just gonna take some fire starters I'm, I'm trying out and I'm gonna take two of them, slide them in there and get this guy started. And this part can be a little bit tricky. It takes a little practice to figure out how to do this just right. We're gonna go ahead and fire up the Masterbuilt Gravity Smoker by pressing the power button on the control panel. 
Then we're gonna go over to the left side and hit the temperature button. We're gonna use the little wheel to get the temperature to 250 degrees Fahrenheit. 250 degrees Fahrenheit is where we're gonna start this cook. You can also use the timer function with the little clock on the right. However, I don't typically use that. Immediately the fan fires up and it starts to blow air into the firebox, which regulates the temperature in the cooking chamber. I just grabbed the cheapest roast that I could find in the grocery store, just your average on sale type of, you know, tough meat. And uh, I got lucky, it was already fairly much prepared. It had a little bit of silver skin on it, but I wasn't gonna untie it just to trim that little bit off. So I went straight to the rub. We're gonna use a sweet and savory barbecue rub. And this is a freshly ground sweet and savory barbecue rub. Now we're gonna go ahead and add a little bone broth, specifically about 12 ounces of bone broth. And we're gonna come up about a half an inch or so on the roast. We don't wanna add too much but we wanna add just enough to kind of give us a nice steaming atmosphere. Now, since we're doing barbacoa tacos, I thought I had to add some Stubbs Hickory Bourbon Barbecue Sauce, it's my favorite. Used about a half bottle here, so not on the meat because we didn't want it to burn, but in the bone broth to make sure we get those wonderful flavors. Once the pit's up to temperature and we have the meat prepped, it's time to go ahead and start to cook. Simply just put the pan in the center of the master belt, close the lid, and it's time to go make some preparations. We're gonna roughly dice up one onion. We're also gonna do a jalapeno, and this is gonna give us a little bit of heat. You can use more than one if you want more heat. And we're gonna use about four cloves of garlic, just a rough chop on these because we're gonna blend them into some magical goodness. But before we can do that, we wanna roast them. You know, roasting your vegetables is gonna get some additional flavor. Gordon Ramsay says, no color, no flavor. Well, it comes down to this as well. If you're making a sauce out of something and you roast them, well, you're gonna get a lot better flavor. Roasting only took about 10 minutes. Those little green things you see in the grocery store are tomatillos, and they are a type of tomato. We're gonna go ahead and pull that outside covering off of them, and then just dice them up in well, quarters or so, depending on how big they are. We're gonna roast these guys with the other vegetables, and that'll give us some nice flavor and some nice color. We're gonna use one bundle of cilantro. We're gonna cut up half of it for roasting, and then the other half will be for serving with the tacos as far as toppings go. The half you're gonna use as a topping, make sure you chop it up a little finer. After about two and a half hours, we're gonna go ahead and open the lid and see what we're dealing with. I've got a baster and I'm gonna go ahead and baste this roast because I wanna cook it from all directions and make sure it stays moist and has plenty of flavor. You can see from the steam when we release the liquid on top of the meat, it's cooking the meat from the top. And this is a wonderful thing. This is gonna help our cook be as flavorful and moist as possible. We're gonna close the lid and let this roast come up to about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. After 150 degrees Fahrenheit, we're gonna go ahead and jack the temperature up on the master belt to about 325. At 325, we're gonna make this cook go a little faster. The meat is pretty much done accepting smoke. We're gonna go ahead and put some foil on top and we're gonna switch from the smoking process to the braising process. Our vegetables are done. We're gonna take them out of the oven. You're gonna put them in some type of cup or some type of blender, blend them down to a nice chunky liquid, add a little agave, I'd say about a tablespoon or so, just to kind of offset that heat a little bit, add a little bit of lime juice, a tablespoon or so, and then go ahead and re-blend it into a absolutely magical goodness. Five hours in, let's go ahead and check our meat. Things are definitely moving a little faster than they were. You can see the boiling, and my gosh, this thing smells good. Let's see what our temperature is. Okay, so we're somewhere just over 200. We have a little further to go. We're gonna go up to about 205. And I also know that we're not done because the meat isn't exactly as tender as I want it. Now, you're dealing with a very 
tough piece of meat with any roast. So it's important to take it up to the correct temperature, but it's also important to probe the meat because probing it is going to tell you exactly how tender it is, where temperature is just a bit of a guide. In this case, the final temperature was about 206 degrees. At 206 degrees, we took it out of the smoker and put it into an oven that's off and just let it rest for about an hour. Now it's time to make these tacos. I use two soft shell tacos, and then we go ahead and add our meat. And don't forget to dribble some of the sauce on top of the meat. The sauce is your best friend here. The sauce is where so much of the flavor is, so make sure you use plenty of it. Then we're gonna add our green veggie sauce. Some diced onions. Top this guy with some cilantro now. But before we start eating, let's add a little bit of lime. Oh my, the smokiness of the beef, the tenderness, it all just comes together in this absolutely phenomenal taco. Make sure you try these barbacoa tacos. They're absolutely wonderful and they're fairly easy. I appreciate you stopping by and watching the video. Please share it with your family, friends, and I'll see you on the next cook.